Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23 where I am attempting to complete the realistic progression tech tree which will allow me to unlock my Saturn V rocket. Now last time we tried to launch this Skylark 4, this amazingly thin and long rocket into orbit and failed. Uh, in the meantime I've looked up how the whole realistic progression tech tree works and it turns out that what we really need to do is put a stay put nick into orbit. So this is not the way to get mega science points. So let me uh, get rid of this and let's start over shall we? Let's uh, start with a stay put nick and I'm going to use the one with the better heat tolerance as usual. And so we need to be able to use this and get into orbit. That's gonna be tricky of course. Um, for so many reasons, but let's slap on uh, mech gem on it. One of the reasons is we really need to uh, have a heat shield too. Uh, that's not going to cover anything good, is it? And uh, that's huge. Can we get a heat sh Ah, the one meter is good. Yeah, that's... well, mech gem is going to die. Um, well, really all we need to do is protect this and its parachutes, right? That's the key thing. Let's make sure it's attached right. Okay, so let's get its parachutes on. And perhaps what we need is some real chutes. It looks like we'll end up putting it below the pod. That would be weird, wouldn't it? Because they're, they're like this and they won't attach on top. Um, I guess maybe I should stick with the radio mount. Oh, these are huge. Um, these are really small, but they worked, so let's use them. So four radio mount parachutes like this. And does that look like the heat shield will cover them? No. <laughs> so let's put them over on top here like this. All right. Alright, so that'll be our basic uh, stay put nick. And what we need is a little tank. That's too small. Oh, well, we need a decoupler first. Once we've got it into its uh, re entry, we can decouple. This one will work. Uh, the problem with the one meter part is that it's not quite fitting any of the regular decouplers. I guess this one? This? No, that's too huge. Don't I get a 1 meter decoupler for my 1 meter heat shield? Uh, does not look like it. 0.5.5, 2 meter. Wow, no 1 meter decoupler. Alright, fine, fine. I'll just put this one. And then... This is a 1 meter strutty... Well, it's not even 1 meter, is it, that one? But uh, let's go with the one meter stretchy tank. Let's give it a metallic color. Now we have uh, fairings now, right? Let's see. Oh, but they're too small. They're like that. I want a fairing though. Hmm. So maybe we won't go with that tank, we'll go with a smaller tank. Okay, and then what sort of rocket should we use for this? We don't need anything too powerful. These guys should do. Okay, here we can put mech jab. Uh, if I go back to that. Uh, just one. Right. Now, Mech Jeb, tell me, Delta V, please. 1,274 seems, seems right for this portion of the thing. So, let me encase it in some sort of... But I really want something wider than 0.625 though. I mean that's basically what we were doing with the 
Well, this inner stage. Oh, well, that's not too bad. We could use that, couldn't we? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's nothing uh, wrong with using this adapter. Uh, except I need more than one fairing. So, let's say we... Can we do what with it? Just e extra fairing height. Yeah. Come on, you. Sometimes. Just don't want to cooperate. Okay, and... Oh, I got the conic one? Oh, I don't want the conic one. Right. Aha! There we go. That's looking much better. Uh, no, no. Height, not width. Yes! Nope, even more. Can't close it up more than that? Uh, looks like that's the limit. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. All right, well, that's the limit. A little bit of drag there, but what can I do? Yep, look, it looks like it's all good. Very nice, very nice indeed. Nice to have it all nice stuck, tucked into a fairing. And uh, hardly... Oh, wait, I forgot one thing. We need to be able to communicate, right? That adds a lot of infrastructure to the whole thing. Batteries. The antennae. And probably a Communitron 16 as well. And let's uh, zoom in to make sure that that's all oriented properly. Guess we have to slip in some sort of... Well, yeah, there's no real way to control it very well. That's the problem we've been having, that we don't have reaction wheels yet. So, no avoiding that. Mm, anything else? Maybe a solar panel? Oh, that's not a very good place to put a solar panel. Let's say right here. And move the battery over a bit. And move the commu- uh, just the commutatron. Up. Uh, a little bit lower so it doesn't intercept the heat shield. And then another solar panel here. Okay, well, that didn't do too much damage to our Delta V, so that's nice to see. Actually, we could probably, uh, let's say, let's make this one ton and uh, really increase the Delta V of this. Let me get the color back. Okay, and uh, let's see. Actually, I don't want the thrust to weight ratio to be less than 0.5. So I'll keep it to there. So a payload of 0.8 tons, not a huge deal, but it's probably bigger than any rocket we've launched so far. Ooh, changed the fairing quite a lot too. And actually I'll probably want the fairing bits to drop off first. I don't even know if that's possible with this type of thing. Uh, with the inner stage one, it's a little bit complicated. All right, now is it one? No, it's one point two five. Yes. Okay, we're getting serious here. One point two five. Hmm.
You know, this one seems a little bit overpowered, honestly. But then it weighs 0.3 tons, which is quite a lot compared to, say, this RL10A3 is 0.17 tons, has max stress of 66, and has a vacuum ISP of 444. This one only has an ISP of 295, a heavier mass and lower thrust. So I guess it's not bad. Let's just go with uh, thrust to weight ratio of 1 right now. Okay, another one of these. I guess we'll use the conic for this one. Come on, I actually wanted four of those. day for clicking. Alright, so let's say we... Alright, well this is a weird shape, isn't it? Why do we have this odd shape? Ah, okay. Strange trying to reshape these things sometimes. Why are you not cooperating? Maybe it's just being attached at the wrong place. So yeah, yeah, I, I think it was just uh, being attached at the wrong place. That's why the fairing was giving me some weird look to it. All right, I think this will work now. Okay, but that's not the way I wanted to go. Ah, uh, yes. That's better, that's better. Alright. Those can go at the same time there. This engine should actually fire then. Alright, looking good. We've got 5,000 of the necessary 9,500. doesn't want to attach to this. Uh, let's see if I remove the fairings we we'll want to. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes some of these things. There we go. Oh darn. Actually, that would make it for a very unique rocket. But... Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay, so what rocket should we use at the bottom? The problem is a lot of our rockets have been resized to be not conducive to anything helpful here. Um, oh, that's not bad, but it's way underpowered if I try and use it. It's only 66 thrust, and we've already, yeah, we've already handled that phase of things. Uh, no. That's tiny. Uh, whoa. Uh, totally different class, very much so. Ooh. Even the descent engine, the lunar... Descent engine is huge. UDMH, bunch of it. Hmm. Maybe better using one of the LRs, the LR one hundred five. Um. Do we have a good conic tank to figure this out? 
maybe this can be stretched out to a nice look. So let's say... Oh, I passed it. Well, let's say I'll do this first. Okay, so get the... Oh, it's limited? Yeah, it can't go beyond 0.625, so that's no good. This, though, looks horrible. Let me just uh, take a look at what kind of delta V we'll get out of it. Uh, but the drag is going to be ugly. Ah, it's not going to be enough delta V any. Well, it's that's because the thrust is on a totally different plane. Oh, maybe we could use... Um, hold on. Go away. Uh, this, this can go wider, can't it? Ah, yeah. Yeah, I can. Okay, okay. So let's dump this for now. Let's say we use one step above. That's this one. Ah, this problem again. Okay. Now we're cooking with charcoal here. And maybe increase the height of it. Very good. Okay. This one is widened anymore. Let me see. All right. Nice. Nice. Hopefully, it'll remain steady, though. That's going to be a thing. Now. Now we can put some serious rockets at the bottom of this. Oh, this is the really powerful one. Huh. I don't want to jump to that level yet. I don't think we need to go there. No, oh, this is cutting it awful tight. Well, we want it to come back down anyway. But we have to have it come back down where we are in communication range so that we can deploy the parachutes. This will barely be okay. I'm gonna change the texture to white. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I did that again. No, don't do that. Why can't it let me let go of it when I want to let go of it? Okay. Control Z. Wonder if there's another rocket that well let's let's not mess with a good configuration. Let's just go with this. Okay. Well we have a rocket that's capable of getting to orbit. No question about it. So let's uh, see, launch clamps. Staging looks fine. Alright, I don't think this should be called the Skylark anymore. Let, let, let's call it the uh, Stay Putnik 1. I guess that's fair enough. All right, well, there's bound to be something wrong with it, but let's see how it works. Let's go out to launch pad. Okay, actually it occurred to me that we don't really need 
that I guess we would like to bring it back down to collect the samples, but we would get a little bit of science even if we could just transmit the information back down. So that's that's something to look forward to. All right, uh, throttle needs to be up. SAS is on. Uh, I guess we'll go for launch. Excellent, we have liftoff. We have a very slow liftoff though. Oh, does this still not have thrust vectoring? Ah, uh, I might have to use a different rocket. Yeah, this is going to end badly. Let me shut this down. Let me just make sure this has thrust vectoring. But there's no point uh, running it now. All right, so we need to make sure that uh... <laughs> the sound of random carnage. But our our state putnik is all right. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> all right, so we need to have a uh, some a gimbling engine at the bottom of our main stack. Otherwise, there's no hope because there's no reaction wheels. Uh, so as everything uh, blows up around us, let's go back to the VAB. Right, thrust vectoring, very important. Uh, this one does not have it. Let me see if the, its equivalent up here does. Yeah, this one does, but it is way powerful. It is 822 max thrust. I should probably tone that down, if anything. But, uh, I don't know, what's the relative masses? This one is much lighter. I don't think there's any... Oh, well, maybe this one would fit. Whoa, that is way lots of thrust. Okay, let's not do that. Um, that's too big. Alright, uh, interesting that our main consideration when adding rockets is whether they'll actually fit at the bottom of something. So... Let's see what the situation with this rocket is. At least it has gimbling, but it is not as efficient, it looks like. Um, 256 at sea level versus 220. Well, no, it's more efficient than this one, uh, except not in vacuum. Hmm. Alright, so we have to make this bigger, which we can. Let's actually try and put it into a fairly high orbit so that we have a long time to talk with the with the Seputnik. And I'm gonna throttle this rocket down a bit uh, if I can actually reach the bits. There's too many, too many of these things. Um, how do I reach it? Oh yes, I can move the entire rocket up, and then I can. All right, and max angle. I want three degrees on the gimbling. We've got tweakable gimbal on this, so. Very important, must install tweakable gimbal in uh, Realism Overhaul. So, it's just my recommendation. Okay, so I can see the adjusted thrust to weight ratio if I change this, so that's good. And let's have it at 1.3. I don't like uh, just having it at uh, the baseline minimum. Okay, I think we're ready to go. We'll just call it Stay Putnik 1 since, well, the other one didn't really get off anywhere. So, up to launch pad again. And since this bottom rocket is actually the rocket from the Atlas stage, uh, the Atlas rocket, we're probably going to be sticking around with it for a while. We're probably going to get a lot of mileage out of this particular rocket engine. Okay, SES on, throttle up, and uh, all looks good. So, launch. Uh, getting up to great speed very quickly uh, and let's see if not all rockets can be throttled down and this one does not seem to give me much throttle control <laughs> so this let me actually check that out um, so if we drop this if I throw oh I, if we drop that I don't know if I can even throttle down uh, come on give me a way to look at things 
No, can't. Okay, well, things are going to be overheating soon. Let me just try and throw down as much as I can. I've already passed the point where I should have been doing the gravity turn. But we want to put this in a fairly high orbit anyway, so that we can talk to it for longer. Okay, overheating is subsiding at least. But uh, we might experience some very bad effects if we can't throttle. So let's see, it's 802 there. Let me say I go to full throttle. Hey, uh, it's, it's not really throttling at all. Okay. So this is not a throttleable rocket. Throttleable rocket. Which is fair enough. As long as we don't have too much of a re-entry heat situation here. Uh, parachutes are having issues. Okay, but it should be fine. We're going very high with this, but um, that was because I can't throttle it. I'll have to make the bottom stage heavier in retrospect. And that way it'll slow down and I'll be able to turn it properly. G-forces are huge. Uh, I should have paid attention to that. We need to shut down this engine. That's too much G-forces, so we'll switch to the next stage. Okay. This is a more manageable stage with a throttleable engine, throttleable engine. So let's try and use it to get into orbit. The, uh, this is not a proper launch profile. Do not get me wrong, this was not a good launch profile. But when you're desperate to get into orbit, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, what I'm gonna do is. I think we should pop those off. I need to get the communitron working. Let's collect some data. Now, the data recorder is only calibrated for flying high situations. I thought this was supposed to let me do it, well maybe I, no, I thought I would be able to do it in orbit, but it doesn't look like it. Well anyway, yeah, recovering the this from orbit is still going to be valuable, so let's, let's do that. You know what, what, what we might do is, we, I don't think we have enough, uh, because of the mismanagement of the first stage, I think we might be better off bringing it back down quickly. Well, not too quickly. I mean, uh, keeping the periapsis in the atmosphere so it comes down directly. But then, if I do that, the parachutes will open uh, at an inopportune time. Hmm. This is very complicated. Uh, The numbers do not look good for orbit, actually. Bad launch profile. Rather than getting into orbit, I guess I could just retrieve it from space. Have we done a retrieve from space yet? I think so, so I can't do that. Huh. Well, I think this is actually going to fail miserably. I see what I'm looking at is total delta V. Add that to the current orbit, let's say. And what you get is about 7,300 meters per second. And what we really need is 7,800. Or if you're looking at surface, we need 7,300. So we're going to fall short. 
and that means we're going right back down again and we're going right back down on the side away from the KSC so we can't pop the parachutes and that's even if we could survive re-entry which is doubtful so let me try this rocket again but fix up the stages I want to try and at least get the stay putnik into orbit this time but I'm gonna let this one fall back down let's just time warp it through it I don't have any connection anymore but it's on a suborbital trajectory and should come crashing down so let's go back to the VAB and uh, and see what's what so somewhat ironically what we really need to do is make this whole thing heavier and thereby slower to accelerate and therefore safer to rotate I'm going to boost it up to and of course if this had been an engine that I could throttle it would have been fine but uh, let's just take a look yeah you can see minimum thrust 822 max thrust 822 so there's no way to throttle it it's basically a solid rocket except you can relight it I mean in terms of the way it would react compared to stock KSP 1.1 should be fine but the g-forces oh uh, yeah okay max thrust weight ratio 7.88 the g-forces will be quite intense at that point so what we do is we actually increase the size of this stage and yeah Well, let's hope that'll be good enough. All right, uh, 6.6 shouldn't be too bad on the thrust to weight ratio in terms of G-forces. All right, let's uh, say, well, the M1 didn't work at all either, so stay putting the one again. And let's try and launch this again to orbit though. Uh, uh, is there any way to configure the stay putting for not flying high situation? I mean, right click, no. Uh, Oh, this, okay, okay, so that's the difference between them. First probe, uh, equipped with two experiments. Okay. And so this is, this one that has less heat tolerance is the one that we have to use for outside the atmosphere. Okay, I get it. All right. But uh, that's, I, I really would like the one with more heat tolerance to be the one that we put outside the atmosphere. But can't be too picky. It seems bulkier. Does it really have to be that bulky? Hmm. don't really see why it should be sticking out like that let's see uh, R to adjust extra radius nope doesn't seem to be working at all but anyway, I want to get into orbit, so let's save this and once again take it out to the launch pad. Somewhat weird looking with the sort of larger cone there. I don't like that really. Oh well. SAS on, throttle up. And I think we go. Remember this Titan is still I mean this Titan, this uh LR-89 is still throttled down to 65% of its normal thrust. So, later on when we build bigger rockets, this will still be a very useful rocket to use. Though, even throttled down 65, uh, to 65%, it seems to overheat quite a lot. Alright, we'll try a normal... 
ascent profile. Hopefully we won't accelerate too quickly. But it still seems we're going up very fast. Did I somehow undo the change I made? At least it seems that uh, with it uh, giving us the overheat there, it's not a real threat. It's just uh, trying to scare us a bit. Yeah, we're going a bit fast. The part where we're going fast for is, of course, uh, crossing about 30 kilometers around there. Uh, the um, the entry heat, uh, well, the exit heat effects, if you will, the the friction with the atmosphere producing heat, which could damage our equipment and especially our parachutes. I'm still doing a very uh, steep ascent because of that. Normally I'd be at uh, 45 degrees by now. Even less. Maybe 40. And around here I should be at uh, 35. Yep, but I think I'm good. Let's rotate fully. Oh, we've got the top fairings on the same stage as the decoupling of stage one. Hmm, that's not right. Well, we seem to be uh, getting to high g-forces, but I'll let it run its course right now. Unless it gives me some really bad sounds. Alright, well, let's decouple everything at once, since that's what we've got. Fair enough. Now, this should get us into orbit, and the stage with the Stay Put Nick uh, will be our um, return. We can start collecting data now, if it works. Okay, we can collect data. Good, good. Okay, uh, we could transmit this data. Oh, speaking of which, uh, where's my Commutron? Come on, Commutron, activate. Uh, yeah, let's just transmit this just in case, huh? Yeah, transmit that data. Uploading, uploading, uploading. Okay, uh, let me get far out of the way like this. Okay, good. I think we got that 50 science. Excellent. Um, so let's take the sample. Oh, 100 points. Wow, okay. Bio samples in space near Kerbin. Preliminary data seems to indicate that all biological samples survived the experiment, but we need to bring them back to mission control for further review. So let's keep that data. And let's endeavor to get that extra 100 points back, including whatever points we get for getting into orbit. We can uh, stop data recording now. How's our connection? Looks like we'll be connected through Apoapsis, so that's fine.
Well, after this, we should contrive to put up some communication satellites, perhaps. It looks like we're gonna have to do some burn on the on the top stage in order to get into orbit. That's fine. We've got uh, quite a bit of delta V there anyway, about six a thousand six hundred. Okay, second stage expended. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, this adapter does not have a decoupler. Ha! Huh. Or is it because the tank is sort of embedded in it? Okay, I thought this thing had a decoupler on it, but it doesn't. I mean, it shows it, right? Uh, if I highlight this, you can see decoupler, right? Huh. Anyway, seems like it's not really treating this as an obstacle, so let me just get into orbit. One thing we don't have is gimbling, not much of it anyway, from the look of it. This isn't going very well. I am trying to turn it upright back to the prograde vector, but uh, using yaw, as you might be able to see, but I can't do it. I might have to start carrying a little bit more RCS. Okay, well this is not right at all now. Okay, yeah. Can't be doing that. Okay, so how are we going? Well, we'll let it spin back to prograde and then burn some more. Oh no, I just <laughs> I just did time warp, which of course uh, kills your spin. Um, can I add a little bit more? No, I can't control it at all. There's like no torque in the stay putnik. Ah, oh, should have figured that out. Let's see. We're going to be in trouble soon, and we have no connection. Uh, okay, so I need to figure out why that didn't decouple. I'll just add an extra decoupler there. Maybe some RCS too, since I can't be having this sort of... Well, it's gonna make me watch this whole thing go to pieces, I guess. Fair enough. All right, now it's done, right? Yes. Okay, so this annoying thing pretends to be a decoupler. You can see I'm highlighting it right now, and it, it highlights that thing, which is a decoupler, but it isn't really a decoupler. So let's just add a decoupler. What? Why can't I? Wait. There's no attachment point. Why is there no attachment point? This is a fuel tank. Oh, why? What? Okay. You. Go away. You. Attach to there. This is really annoying. So, uh, it's maybe it's because this attachment point wasn't in the, configured in the right place? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna add that to the little uh, decoupler anyway, just in case. I'm not taking any chances this time. Now I wanted to add some RCS. Can we do that? We've got these RCS thruster blocks. And we don't really need a separate tank for RCS, I don't think. Let's see. Um, uh, this doesn't seem to have RCS fuels here. So I guess we do. Can this carry RCS fuel? No. Uh, 
Nope. We need a cryogenic tank to carry it, I guess. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Hydrazine, alright. Yeah, this this this'll work. So let's add a tank of basically an RCS tank. And RCS ports. Now we don't need anything too serious. But they all look like they're the same power anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know why we have three different types. Oh, uh, the axes, maybe? Oh, let's just go for this one then. Ooh. Doesn't fit great, I can't say, but... Well, that'll do. Okay, let's get the fuel in there. Hydrazine. Okay, yeah, we're good for hydrazine. Let's see how much that changes things. Uh, hmm. We seem to be missing some staging. Why is this? Right. I don't think I really need this one, but uh, I've, I'm not going to take any chances this time. Okay, it does uh, dump our Delta V down by a bit. Let me reduce the size of this tank. Let me just get some of the fuel out. And let's say only 36 hydrazine. That looks better. I actually have to reduce the size of this one too. Its uh, thrust weight ratio is down. Actually, let me just uh, add more, actually. I'll accept the lower thrust to weight ratio because we need a delta V. Okay, now. Ooh. Okay, well, I guess I should have expected that. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is not going very well. No, nah, I don't really like the look of that. It's this decoupler, I think. Nope, it wasn't the decoupler. Wonder why it's the suddenly decided to look like that. I gotta sneak this back in anyway then. I don't know. Don't know why it decides to look like that now. Well, let's try it out. Uh, let, let's call this Stay Putnik 2, just for the heck of it. Alright, one more time in this episode to attempt to get into order. We already got 50 signs from the last time, but let's try this again. Okay, SAS is on, throttle is up, and we're a go. Should have added more weight to that. I don't suppose using this I can throttle it down. Nope. Nope. Thrust limiter here does not does not care. Does not care at all. 
I should have figured that. So actually, the thrust limiter is completely useless in this case. Ah, right. All right. So, note to self for the future: if there's no way to throttle a rocket down, I don't think you can limit its thrust either. Okay, we're already getting pretty high here on the apoapsis side. Right. Looking very much like the missile that we are here. Well, we have to get the fairing open in order to maintain connection. Whoa, did I do something wrong? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, come on. Really? I had something decoupling coupled somewhere wrong? Okay. Um, so I can't control that rocket anymore. Boy, this has been really a tough time for me as far as things that don't usually go wrong for me going wrong. Very... Yeah. Okay, well I just wanted to uh, be able to knock off something or another. I don't think this is going to work very well. <laughs> uh, oh, crud. Okay, well we do the spinny thing. Until that stage runs out of fuel. We can uh, activate data recorder and then take the sample and then try and bring it back down. We'll use the rockets on the final stage in order to slow us down on descent but I don't know if it'll be good enough. Okay, keep data. Well, we're not going to go into orbit but we can at least try and uh, return the sample back and get that science. Huh. Yep. Definitely should have drunk more coffee before starting this episode. Yep. I can't even click on the tank to see how much fuel it has left. It's got a lot of fuel. It's got a lot of fuel. Hardly think I needed RCS and <laughs> with the situation being what it is, but wonder what happened. I mean, was it just a staging problem? I guess it must have been. It must have been that this decoupling occurred at the same time that stage lit. This does have to stop at some point, right? Can't uh, obviously time warp like that. Apoapsis is, is coming up. I'd hate to think about what happens if I try and do physical time warp. Probably something crazy. Oh, finally. Alright. Well, RCS can at least stabilize us, right? Yes? Good. Good deal. Glad I brought the hydrazine along. All right. Now let's orient retrograde. This is gonna be tricky because we'll have to slow down first and then dump all this in order to retrieve it. And we have to stay connected somehow. <laughs> uh, well, the curvature of the planet, we probably, well, it's gonna be close. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay connected before it's time to pop parachutes. Uh, you know, while it, when it's time to pop parachutes. Um, well. well, let's uh, start uh, getting closer to the atmosphere. Let's get a sense of how quickly I'm coming down. Alright, it's not too bad actually. Oh, we're already in no connection. Oh, crud. 
Oh, I didn't extend the Communitron. Uh, if I had extended the Communitron, I think we think, well, no. I mean, when you look at it, well, I think we would have still been in communication with it. Tough call, though. I should use uh, the Kerbalest, the, the little uh, scripting thing, so that you could uh, have your your craft operate on a script and not even touch the controls at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazingly, it's oriented in the correct direction. Now that's that's rare. But it's not going to survive this at all. There it goes. Oh, well that was the heat shield. Okay. Now, if, if it could only pop its parachutes. <laughs> oh. If it could only pop its parachutes, it would bring back the science safely. <laughs> oh. That's just not fair. Oh, wow. Well, that's quite impressive. Quite impressive. But I'm afraid it's, it's done for. Let's... Let's have it smash in the surface so that uh, Space Center will be confident that this thing is through. And I'll try better next time, folks. But but let's go to the tech tree and see about that 50 points, shall we? So here's the thing. I don't know with the whole activate data recorder thing. I don't know if this these gravioli detectors and stuff like that will really provide the science I need. So you can see I have the 59 points and researching this would give me 50 points but it's only relevant if uh, these experiments are still gonna give me science. I think they will but I need to double check to make sure otherwise I'm gonna be stranded in a tech tree without... well that's not true. I, I can be, build much bigger rockets than I've been doing. We've got the fuel tanks and the rockets to do so. But uh, I just want to be safe and make sure that those experiments will do what I think they'll do and give me the science that I want. Uh, among the other things that I should get are probably uh, communication dishes because I need to put those in orbit. So that's what, uh, that's 50 science. If I ever want to send Kerbals up, I'm going to have to save up a lot of science, 500 science, in order to get to Command Pod Mark 1. Wow, they really made it difficult to send Kerbals into orbit, didn't they? Um, planes, I guess they probably have some sort of special purpose now, but I'll have to look into that. I'm sure you guys will all like lights, but uh, that's a hundred science, I can't afford it right now. And we're a long ways away from landing anything. That's 500 science. Uh, these are mostly SRBs. Never liked SRBs. Docking ports, ways away from that. Ten science though. I mean, parachutes. Interesting parachutes. Parachutes are actually one meter. Decouplers are actually one meter. Could have used those already. We have big decouplers for some reason, but not small ones. Lots of small decouplers here. That's another fifty science. Ah, the regular RCS fuel tanks. Well, we managed without them. And we have RCS. So this isn't urgent, though there's the reaction wheel. Could use one of those. Only a little bit of uh, torque, though. That's a uh, heavily nerfed reaction wheel right there. And finally, what we have more fairings and adapters. Well, the best... Uh, best adapter and fairing that we've got is very limited so that might be a good thing to get eventually okay so really I'm looking at this one and possibly this one but this one first but let me check that the science works as I think it does and then I will be ready to do 
more impressive experiments and hopefully finally get something to orbit after uh, after drinking some coffee and pondering it for a night. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like, especially if you want to see more realism overhaul stuff. And uh, yeah, any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.